right, thank you everybody for coming. Um, my name is Mike Hosh. I'm a director of product development uh, for Dorner Manufacturing. And what we're gonna talk about a little bit today is the integration of packaging lines and how uh, conveyors and other mechanisms can help the, reduce the integration time and save money in, in the uh, process of commissioning a uh, package application system. When you look at packaging applications, they, come, they run the gamut of applications that are simple, that are virtually all just operator interface to all the way up to robotic integration. And um, basically from you know, putting product into containers, those products into um, bulk shipping processes, things like pushers and conveyors, and all these things basically run kind of the 80-20 rule is not one application is all manual and not one application is all robotic so the real key to this is integration so how do you integrate all these different needs within a packaging application together to most efficiently and effectively serve ultimately the need of the customer and when you look at these applications you find a, a very common thread and that is usually conveyors are the backbone of these types of systems. You see the conveyors being the backbone, you're mounting sensors to them, pushers to them, they're linking um, operations or machines together, and they serve as this, this backbone for the system. So with that, we're gonna take a look at four different ways conveyors help to improve the integration of packaging type applications. One is picking the right um, product or platform for the application. The second is different ways to use that product or platform to speed up the commissioning or the efficiency of getting the system ready. The third is integrating electronics and lastly energy con conservation. When we take a look at that same slide you see that lots of different industries have those same type of needs. Different products from industrial applications to medical applications all the way from dry food products to raw food products. And in that area, there's different conveyors to serve these application needs. Typically in industrial applications, you're using form steel style conveyors or aluminum conveyors with T-slots. These are very common conveyor designs. They've been around for years. But as we head into applications that have a little bit more regulatory or um, clean application needs for them, there's different styles of conveyors that have been, have been developed over the years to aid the applications. Um, one is a flat-sided aluminum conveyor. Um, easier to clean, easier to wipe down in, in things like pharmaceutical applications, but a little bit more difficult to attach and do some mechanical integration. Um, and then you're into your stainless steel products or, or, or a lower end of stainless steel conveyors all the way to your welded stainless steel products. Um, so selecting the right platform is the key to integration. You want to make sure that the, the, the conveyor has the right features and functions for the application, but also allows you to integrate it together and mechanically bolt um, the equipment together. Um, time is as valuable as money. Everybody knows this. And project teams have been giving less time to the commissioning of a system. Um, as we've talked before, conveyors being the skeleton of the system, there's methods today that exist on all those conveyor lines that, that I just showed to, to, to reduce that integration time and ultimately save money. As we take a look at the, the, the list of products here, really what we're talking about is mechanical integration. How do we quickly bolt devices together to the conveyor or to machines as you link, as the conveyor links the machines and, and in the uh, T-slotted conveyor, the aluminum conveyor, the T-slot is something that's been around for years and allows quick access to that. On the, on the flat-sided aluminum conveyor, there's something new called the smart slot technology, which allows people to bolt things to the conveyor very quickly and very easily. And even in the stainless steel applications, there's been some improvements to conveyor lines to allow the integration to, to go a little bit quicker. So I'm going to provide a little, a little bit more detail on that. When you think about aluminum conveyors, and you see a lot of them through the halls here, you see the T-slot. And that really came to the U.S. market around 1990 with companies like Dorner and, and SKF FlexLink that brought the T-slot um, um, to the marketplace. But 
Uh, conveyor company is growing even further than that now with things like integrating the wireway into the conveyor side rail so you can run low voltage wireway along the length, maybe even putting um, integrated airlines or pneumatic lines that can be tapped along the, the length of the conveyor to be used as a header or even something called a quick slot which you can see along the length of the conveyor allows you to able to attach um, very cheaply and very quickly um, lightly loaded devices like conduit and things like that so again you can commission the conveyor application and your your packaging integration application much quicker taking that next step into stainless steel equipment um, you know they have the same needs if you're in a food application you still have wires you still have pushers you still have airlines but they can't use t-slot technology to do that so there's things like um, key slot mounting systems which are uh, periodically punched along the conveyor frame that allows you to, to mechanically bolt things to the conveyor much quicker than getting your service crew out there and drilling and tapping into a conveyor frame and putting on those things like accessory mounts so you can still get some functionality to be able to take photo eyes and move them back and forth and adjust them for, for applications that need that level of adjustment. And then even in the most um, uh, stringent of applications like USDA style food conveyors where you can't um, put in slots, you don't want a lot of fasteners, um, there's, there's this accessory system that bolts to the bottom lip of the conveyor frame and can be slid along to locate things like photoelectrics and things like that. All these devices that you see, the, the chute on the conveyor and, some, and, and uh, some of the guiding devices are all mounted on that lower lip of the frame. They're all outside the food zone. So there are a couple fasteners but, they're, but they, they do not uh, drain back into the food zone. They just drain down, down. So these are just some examples of different ways that you can save time when you're integrating um, pushers, shoots, guiding, and devices onto conveyor applications. But mechanical integration is only one side of the coin. We also have electrical product integ integration. And companies, conveyor companies, slide manufacturers, other different uh, companies that provide motion type products have seen the need to integrate the electronics into their, into their equipment. Um, they're asked to do different, uh, more complicated moves like positioning, indexing, holding, and these require the integration of control type um, things like servo motors into mechanical equipment. The benefits that you get from that is um, to have the original manufacturer integrate in that, certainly it reduces design time. No longer you do you require the electrical engineers on your design team to integrate that device into the, into the product. Um, the other thing is known performance limits. Anybody who's integrated servo motors or stepper motors, they can be very finicky, and this way you're, you're matching exactly the mechanical capability of the conveyor or the slide with the electrical capability of the servo and stepper. Um, along with that, you're right-sizing the package. So you get um, basically electrical efficiencies and energy efficiency, so you're right-sizing the two together. Um, another benefit is the possibility of an integrated HMI where you can get a little bit of feedback coming back from the system telling you how the system is performing. And that's really the, the next step of this integrated electronics that some people are just starting to take this next um, issue forward, and that is getting information from your conveyor or mechanical device. With the uh, integration of the servos and stepper motors, you can get feedback like the amps that it's drawing, the temperature of the motor, the speed that it's running, um, and other application data that's going on on the conveyor. And you can bring these back to a central controller for things like maintenance efficiency or uh, production output or just even improving overall energy consumption of the system. And then energy consumption is the last area that we're going to take a look at, and that's how can energy conservation be applied to conveyor systems in uh, packaging applications. And when you take a look at pa packaging applications, as you look around the room, you see a lot of small conveyors used in these applications. 
Usually it's not one mainline conveyor running for a long distance. It's several small conveyors that are put together. And uh, when you look at energy conservation, um, usually the EPAC motors, the energy efficient motors, start at one horsepower. And most conveyors used in packaging applications are smaller than one horsepower. So at times, people forget that there's still money to be saved in these types of applications. So when we look at an application that may have 15 small quarter horsepower motors running at 230 volt, they're gonna draw about 18 amps versus maybe three large conveyors of two horsepower each, and that draws 15 amps. So when you look at that, even though you say, well, I only have a quarter horsepower motor, but when you add them all up, you're drawing the same amount of power as, as a couple large motors, and there's money there to be saved. Three different ways to save money. One is right-sizing the package, making sure that the motor you select fits the size of the conveyor you need and also the size of the load that you're trying to carry. Um, also looking at different energy efficient gearing. Not all gearing is the same, not all gearing is equal, and there's money to be had there. And lastly, we'll take a look at different ways you can turn off the motor at times to save some money. Right sizing the package, again, as we talked about, most of the things that people are moving around are very small, light products, usually less than 20 pounds. But when you put a half horsepower motor or a one horsepower motor on a small conveyor, you got a lot more carrying capacity. In, in this, this example here, a, a small conveyor with a small parallel shaft motor versus a little bit larger quarter horsepower right angle motor, you're talking about 0.22 amp draw versus 1.2. So a huge difference when you, buy, you get the right size gear motor for the right size small conveyor for the right size uh, weight that you're trying to move. The second piece, as I mentioned, is gearing. Um, there's lots of different types of gear heads out there. There's 90 degree worm gears, there's plan inline planetary gears. And when you take a look at these things, obviously price is one consideration. The other p the consideration is energy uh, usage. Um, a worm gear is substantially less energy efficient than an inline planetary. Usually worm gears are in the, they can be as low as 50%, maybe in the 70% range. Uh, planetaries can be you know, up in the 90s. So for the same size motor in these two applications, you're talking about with a worm gear 0.19 kilowatts of power versus 0.12. So add that up with all the gear motors over your facility and there's some money there to be saved. The last piece is just simply turning off the conveyor. Uh, lots of times when you lay out a conveyor system, uh, and an application, a packaging application, not all the conveyors need to be run all the time. Some of them are conveyors that are on diversion lines, they're on alternative flows, um, and basically, if you, if you track the flow of the product, you will know when to turn on and off a conveyor. Some conveyors even have sensors built into them to know when the product comes onto the conveyor itself, and then it'll start up ahead of time and run. So, you know, there's no, no, no better way to conserve energy than to actually not have that conveyor run or run only when it needs to. So, these are, you know, in summary, these are just a couple different ways to, to save money, to save time, be a little bit more efficient in your uh, integration of your conveyor systems. So I'd like to thank you for your time. And uh, if you'd like to see these products or products like I've discussed today, you can come see us at the Dorner booth. We're in booth 4933, just a little bit further down the hallway. Thank you.